All right, the moment has come. Which 10 films are going to be nominated for the Best Picture Oscar? Hi, it's Brian. This is the awards contender. And in my final early Oscar prediction video of the season, we're talking Best Picture. Here we go. So looking down the list, I would say there are six movies that are for sure getting into Best Picture. I think they are locks. There's no way they can miss. And then I would say slots seven, eight, and nine are also pretty set. I would put them at like 99% chance these movies get in. There is always room for a couple surprises in the best picture category, but I feel like this year there are about nine movies that look pretty likely of getting in. And the big mystery is going to be which film takes that 10th and final slot. Let's start by talking about the six movies that are for sure getting in, starting with Oppenheimer. Like, there's not much to say here. Oppenheimer is obviously getting into Best Picture. The question with Oppenheimer right now is, can it win Best Picture? Christopher Nolan's film has taken the world by storm this year. I mean, the reviews, the box office. He is very much overdue at the Oscars, and I do think Christopher Nolan is probably going to win Best Director. But even if that happens, Nolan sweeps the season. He wins Best Director everywhere, and he wins at the Academy Awards. Does that necessarily mean that Oppenheimer is also going to win Best Picture? Not necessarily. I feel like every two to three years we get a picture director split. Like in 2022, Coda won Best Picture. Jane Campion won Best Director for The Power of the Dog. In 2019, Green Book won Best Picture. And Alfonso Cuaron won Best Director for Roma. Now this is kind of a different situation in that in both of those cases I just mentioned, the directors of the Best Picture winners were not even nominated for Best Director. Whereas this year, Nolan will be nominated. He's likely going to win. And so Oppenheimer winning Best Picture kind of makes the most sense if you're a betting person. Like I still think the movies I have in slots two and three could also win, but Oppenheimer right now is your safest bet. Number two is Killers of the Flower Moon. That is also getting into Best Picture. It's getting into Best Director for sure, Best Actress for Lily Gladstone, probably Actor, Supporting Actor, like Killers of the Flower Moon, even though I had some issues with it, most people love it and it's going to do very well this award season. I'm recording this just a day after the New York Film Critics revealed their winners and they gave Best Picture to Killers of the Flower Moon, along with Best Actress for Lily Gladstone. And I could see this movie racking up a lot of nominations and wins from critics groups at the precursor ceremonies over the next few weeks. Like it's definitely getting into best picture at the Oscars and could potentially win the whole thing. I don't personally think that's going to happen. I don't think Killers of the Flower Moon is going to win best picture at the Oscars, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely getting nominated. In some ways, I still think there's another movie that's going to be Oppenheimer's biggest threat. My number three choice, Poor Things, from director Yorgos Lanthimos. This movie is so wild and brilliant and magnetic. It is such an extraordinary movie. It hasn't come out yet as of this recording. Like it's opening and limited release on December 8th going wider on December 22nd, I feel like Poor Things is going to really hit at the right time, going into January, the first big precursor ceremonies. And in some ways, I feel like Killers of the Flower Moon might fade a little bit once we get into like February, whereas Poor Things, I believe, is going to keep gaining momentum. Get ready for Emma Stone to win some prizes for her amazing performance. I can see Yorgos Lanthimos getting into Best Director at the Oscars. And Poor Things, of course, is getting into Best Picture. I can still see Poor Things winning Best Picture over Oppenheimer at the Oscars. It'll ultimately depend on the level of enthusiasm, the passion from Academy members for this most unique film. 
My choice for the number four slot is The Holdovers from director Alexander Payne. I knew when I saw this one at Telluride that it was going to be an awards favorite. Like the performances, the writing, the direction, the sense of place. It's so funny, you want to embrace this movie. It's so much different from the other big contenders of the year. It's such a warm, lovely film, and I can't wait to watch it again. The Holdovers is definitely getting into Best Original Screenplay, Best Supporting Actress for Divine Joy Randolph, Best Actor for Paul Giamatti. I cannot imagine Giamatti missing. That would be so devastating. I still think Alexander Payne has a pretty good shot of getting into Director. And then Best Picture? Duh. If Best Picture was only 5 slots and not 10, The Holdovers would still make it in 100%. So in a field of 10, like there's no question. I don't think The Holdovers is going to win very much this season in the Best Picture category, but it's gonna show up there over and over again all the way to the Oscars. I would say the number five slot goes to Barbie ever since this movie opened and got rave reviews, made over a billion dollars at the box office, like just completely succeeded in every way possible. Honestly, I could see Barbie overperforming this season in every way, in the acting categories, in best director, in best picture, like anyone who still doubts, well, it's kind of a comedy, it's a summer escapist movie. Like, no, Barbie is going to be a big Oscar player, Golden Globes player, SAG. I can see it doing really well. I can see it winning things. It's going to get at least, I think, eight or nine Oscar nominations. And one of those nominations is going to be in Best Picture. Now, in this case, if Best Picture was only five slots, I would be like a little nervous about Barbie's chances of getting in, but in a field of 10, no question. It's safe, it's in. And the number six, I would say, is the last really safe bet. I would say it's a lock. I can't imagine it missing, even though I haven't watched it yet. I'm hoping to get a screener soon. Whenever I see this one, I will make a review for you. Maestro, directed by Bradley Cooper. Since this film's premiere at Venice, I've heard nothing but great things. I'm really, really excited about this one. And it just feels like a Best Picture nominee. Like I would say in the top eight categories, it's not necessarily for sure getting into everything I can. Like Best Director, but Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Original Screenplay feel pretty safe. I cannot imagine Maestro missing in Best Picture. That would be weird. All right, that takes me to slots seven, eight, and nine. And these three titles, as I said before, I'm about 99%. Like I'm pretty sure they're getting in, starting with another film I haven't seen yet, The Color Purple. I remember how much I was crossing my fingers the day recently when The Color Purple finally started holding screenings for press, for critics. And I was like, be good, movie. Like, please be good. I love Steven Spielberg's 1985 film, which got a lot of nominations, but didn't win anything. And then I've seen the stage musical, which is lovely. And now we have a new musical adaptation of The Color Purple. And what can I say? Based on what I've seen on Twitter, the movie works. The movie's really good. I haven't seen like flat out raves from everybody, like it's the movie of the year or anything, but I'm hearing good to great things. I think it's going to play very well in theaters over the Christmas holidays. And having it come out right at the tail end of the year, I'm sure it's gonna get a boatload of Golden Globe nominations, probably Critics' Choice nominations. I feel like especially with the history of the 1985 Color Purple at the Oscars, even if the new version doesn't get into Best Director, Best Actress, it misses in some tech categories we're expecting. Best Picture, in a weird way, just feels kind of obvious. As long as the movie's really good, which I'm hearing it is, like missing Best Picture would be a huge blow to the color purple. I think it's probably getting in. My number eight slot goes to a film I have seen. It's a masterpiece. It is a brilliant work of filmmaking. And I just cannot imagine 
they snub it in Best Picture. Anatomy of a Fall is too good of a movie to miss picture, especially with 10 slots. Like that would really, really surprise me on Oscar nominations morning if Anatomy of a Fall missed in this category. It is one of the 10 best films of the year easily. It features one of the great performances of the year, Sandra Huller, who's getting into Best Actress at the Oscars. I'm almost 100%. And I mean, anybody who sees Anatomy of a Fall is just gobsmacked by the end. It is a tremendous piece of acting, of storytelling. Anatomy of a Fall is very, very close to being a lock for best picture. And then number nine is a film I haven't watched yet. I'm probably gonna watch it in the next couple days. And it's right behind me here, American Fiction. <laughs> I have the screener to American fiction. I am going to take a look at it very, very shortly. Everything I've heard about this movie is that it's wonderful, an amazing lead performance by Jeffrey Wright, who's never gotten into the Oscars before. I think he's probably getting in to Best Actor. Based on the trailer, it seems to have a comedic vibe to it, which always makes me a little nervous. Comedic films sometimes struggle getting into Best Picture, but I do think the movie winning the People's Choice Award at the Toronto Film Festival last September gave us an early sign American fiction was coming for Best Picture at the Oscars. I do think it's getting in. And so that takes us to the 10th slot. What is going to be number 10 this year? I would say there are five movies kind of hovering around that 10th place slot and a few others that would be huge shocks. I would say the outlier movies that would be shocking Best Picture nominations as of right now are All of Us Strangers, Priscilla, Saltburn, Origin, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Like those five movies, I could see a reality where one of them got in. Right now, I don't think it's gonna happen for any of those. All of Us Strangers by Andrew Haig is a terrific film. I hope he can get in to Best Adapted Screenplay. That would be awesome. There could be an acting nomination for Andrew Scott or Claire Foy, but I don't know. I just don't see that one quite making it into Best Picture. Same with Saltburn, which has gotten lots of hate online in the last few weeks. And it's been kind of devastating to me, honestly, because I think that movie is awesome. I think Saltburn is definitely flawed. It's not a perfect movie. There is a vibe, a presence, a creativity to that film that just blows my mind. I love the look of it, the performances. I would love to see Saltburn get into Best Picture, but as of now, like, I don't know if Saltburn is going to get any Oscar nominations. Its best chance might be like a tech category, cinematography maybe. I still think Emerald Fennell has a chance at original screenplay because that category has some room for a surprise, but Best Picture for Saltburn that would delight me in the most amazing ways on Oscar nominations morning. I don't think that's going to happen. I have seen Origin, the new film from Ava DuVernay, on a couple lists as making the top 10 for Best Picture at the Oscars. I have a screener of that one too. I'm gonna watch it in the next week. But I don't know, I just haven't heard much buzz about that movie. Like it's been very quiet. Like I haven't heard much about Origin and I feel like this is a competitive year to get into those 10 slots. And so I'm not feeling it right now, although Ingenue Ellis Taylor, I think still has a chance of getting into Best Actress. Same with Priscilla, the wonderful new film from Sofia Coppola. I mean, Elvis got into Best Picture and did very well a few months ago. So why can't Priscilla make it in? I just think, again, if Priscilla can make it in somewhere, it's going to be in Adapted Screenplay, or actress. Man, best actress this year is such a bloodbath. There are like 15 women fighting it out for those five slots. It is going to be so interesting to see who actually makes it in on Oscar nominations morning. I feel like there will be a surprise or two there and the same thing could happen in best picture. I could see Priscilla 
getting into Best Picture. But as of now, I do think it's going to miss the cut, although I really enjoyed it. And then Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, it's always hard for an animated feature film to get into Best Picture. I do think what hurts that movie the most is that it has a cliffhanger ending, like it sets up the next one. And I think that's the element of Across the Spider-Verse that makes me doubt it can make it into Best Picture, although it's probably winning Best Animated Feature. Okay, so that leaves me the five final titles to discuss. These, to me, are the five films battling it out for that 10th place slot. Let's start with Air from director Ben Affleck. Is Air going to get a Best Picture nomination? Is it going to do well at the Oscars? It's still a question mark after all these weeks and months. I do think Air will show up in some capacity at the Golden Globe Awards. If it can get a SAG Ensemble nomination, that will be a big help. And if that can happen, then I will start to think Air has a shot of getting into Best Picture. But what else will it be nominated for? Like, I don't know if it'll get into screenplay, any of the acting categories. Like, Air is not going to be nominated for Best Picture, but then not show up in any other top category. That would be weird. So I'm not going to predict it right now, but it's definitely on the bubble. I have heard amazing things about the Iron Claw. Could this be a late breaking success story? A movie that over the Christmas holidays really does gain in momentum, gets a couple big precursor nominations and ends up overperforming on Oscar nominations morning, gets into best picture, an acting category or two, screenplay like it's possible again i haven't seen this one yet but in terms of the movies that are coming out at the end of december one of the last big contenders to be screened for critics this is the one i've seen a lot of passion online for on twitter like i'm seeing people give this thing a 10 out of 10 makes them cry zach efron deserving of a best actor oscar nomination I'm just, I'm so excited to see this one. I know it's going to be great. And who knows, this one could get in if there's enough enthusiasm. I'm not going to predict it right now, but we shall see. May, December. Can May, December get into Best Picture? I had it on the list earlier this morning. I was like, that's probably going to get in. That's probably in slot nine or 10. But as much as I love this movie, and I just reviewed it for the channel, it is a great, great film. I'm like, I don't know, some of the subject matter in the movie, the way it ends, I'm like, I don't know, is this gonna get into Best Picture? I'm kind of leaning toward no. I think May, December is going to do very well this season in the acting categories, but not necessarily in like best director or best picture. And then another movie I had this morning in the 10th place slot, and I'm just going back and forth on this one. It feels like a movie that we're all underestimating right now, and that's going to explode, especially on Oscar nominations morning in a ton of categories. And I'll be like, okay, I was really, really stupid about this one. A movie that might get into picture, director, a couple of acting categories, screenplay, a couple tech categories. And I'm over here like, well, maybe it has a chance for a shocker director nomination. The Zone of Interest. The Zone of Interest is quite a unique vision. It is such a brilliant piece of filmmaking I have not stopped thinking about since Telluride. A big part of me thinks the zone of interest is going to do better this award season than we're expecting, and that it is going to get a Best Picture nomination at the Academy Awards. I feel it in my gut, in a way, that the zone of interest might make it. I wish there were 11 slots. <laughs> like, I wish there were 11 slots. Like, I am very close to predicting it. And if there wasn't this other movie that happens to be my favorite film of the year, and that I'm going to be very, very sad about on Oscar nominations morning, if it misses in Best Picture, I want to say it's safe. I think it's getting in. There is absolutely enough passion for this movie to ensure it gets into Best Picture. And you know what? I would not have wanted to end this video in any other way than saying my number 10 choice 
for a Best Picture nomination is Celine Song's Past Lives. Again, it will be devastating to me if Past Lives misses in Best Picture. It deserves that nomination. No matter what happens in the tech categories, no matter what happens in the acting categories, I am still hoping for a Greta Lee surprise and Best Actress but that one's like definitely on the bubble. She could easily miss. The only category this movie is safe, I think, is original screenplay. Past Lives is getting in there 100%, but Best Picture, sadly, is not a lock for Past Lives. It is a very quiet film with only three major characters, and it's like, well, Brian did Before Sunset and Before Midnight, kind of similar-ish movies. Did those get into Best Picture? No. Is Past Lives getting into Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor? No, probably not. So I'm a little nervous about some of these Oscar categories for Past Lives, but Best Picture, Best Picture. I think it's happening. Past Lives is way too good of a movie to not make it into the top category. I know there might be some doubters out there, but I'm not doubting this one for a second. Past Lives is getting in. My early Oscar predictions for Best Picture are Oppenheimer, Killers of the Flower Moon, Poor Things, The Holdovers, Barbie, Maestro, The Color Purple, Anatomy of a Fall, American Fiction, and Past Lives. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think is going to be nominated for Best Picture at the 96th Academy Awards. Do you agree with my picks or do you think I have it all wrong? We'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.